Up in the film room is defensive tackle Jerron Reed. Uh, I want to go ahead and uh, watch at least one game of his. Uh, to start, let's go ahead and look at his measurables. Alright, so he's 6'3", 307 pounds, and this is courtesy of MockDraftable.com. He has an arm length of 33 and 3 eighths, over 10 inch hands, and he ran about a 5-2-1, which for defensive linemen is, uh, I mean, I don't really put too much value on that. So, let's see here, I'm bringing up some of his stats, and this is where I want to compare him to other defensive linemen in this draft. All right, so bring this in a little closer so you can see it. So in 2015, he played 54% of the snaps. Let me make sure everything's squared away on screen. We're good to go. All right. Let's bring that stuff back up. So you can see he played 54% of the snaps in 2015. And when you look at this column here, his rank is amongst defensive linemen in this in uh, last season in the nation. So he only had one sack. He had 53 tackles. We'll put him. It put him in the top 50. Uh, Ten pressures, only eight hurries. He had a good amount of run disruptions, which I, you would expect from a big guy like that, and that's kind of what he's known for in that two gapping Alabama defense. He had 29 run disruptions, uh, put him 54th in the nation, 50th in this draft. Uh, he didn't miss a tackle, which is always good. And uh, so I want to go look at his game log, all right? Again, he only had one sack, and I want to look at some of his competition. Of course, he plays for Alabama, and he has, he's played against top-notch competition, that's, that's for sure. Uh, Wisconsin, Ole Miss, Georgia, Texas A&M, Mississippi State, LSU. Florida. So he's playing against top tier talent. There's no doubt about that. I, I mean, I won't argue that point. Um, and he had his fair share of tackles um, in the plays that he was in. So, but he just, he's not, he's not a pass rusher. And I don't care what anyone says. Yeah, he was asked to two gap. He was asked to occupy. But when he was aligned as, you know, an edge player, as a five tech in that defense, I didn't really see too much. Um, as far as pass rush moves go, I really didn't. And um, I'm going to show you, I think I'm going to start with the Tennessee tape. I'll, I'll look at draft breakdown and see what they have on film. Um, and we'll go from there and see what games. I, I think they have a Georgia game. Uh, I like to look at least two to three games, but because of the length of um, this recording, it usually, usually one does it. But I try to find you know, a, a film that encompasses the player the best. And uh, it looks like... See, the game he had a sack was against University of Math Monroe. I, I'm, I don't even think that's on draft breakdown. So, so let's go ahead and take a, a look at another defensive tackle, defensive end, um, and Kenny Clark. And, and I know he's playing against different competition in the Pac-12, but I wanted to compare his stats because to me, Jerron Reed is a run-stuffing D-tackle. And in my opinion, you don't, you don't draft a guy at 19. To, to do just that, all right? You need a more well-rounded defender, especially in this draft, right? So I'm going to try to bring up their stats side by side. I don't know how well this is going to work, but... All right, so let's mainly look side by side here. All right, so here's Kenny Clark's numbers. He's actually bigger than Jerron Reed. I, I want to say he's wider. He has shorter arms for sure. I think he has like 32-inch arms, but he was primarily a nose tackle, but he played 83% of their snaps. Again... I understand the, comp the competition and the talent on Alabama's defensive line. They rotated guys in and out. But I just want to look at production. It, how is he going to you know, fit in our scheme? Can he play 5-tech? I don't think he can. I wouldn't want to put him at 5-tech, especially in pass rushing downs. Um, but if you look at the production of Kenny Clark, who is primarily a nose tackle, his numbers were way better. He had you know, five and a half sacks. Get more tackles, obviously more playing time, so you got to take that into account. Um, he had more run disruptions. He had 43 versus Jerron Reed's 29. Um, and he only had 18 pressures, but even that was still more than Jerron Reed. But, I mean, the other thing to look at is, you know, what downs are they primarily playing on? 
and when you bring Clark's numbers up and compare it to Jerron Reed's, I mean, it's very similar. When you look at, obviously, he had more snaps, all right? So Clark had 670, but Jerron had 391. But when you break down the third downs, how, how often were they out there on the field on third downs? They average out right around 25% of the snaps. So out of 670 um, first and second down snaps, Kenny Clark was in on third down 178 snaps. So I, I think that's... In all, it comes down to right about a quarter or 25% of the snaps where these guys were in on third down. The difference being, John Reed's projected to go in the first round, Kenny Clark's projected to go in the second round. So you can get the same production out of Kenny Clark that you can get out of John Reed. Again, I understand competition, but either way, when it comes down to it, you're, you can get the same player, the same value from a guy in the second round that you can from John Reed. Now, the other argument for Jerron Reed is, well, yeah, he was only asked to occupy people. He wasn't asked to rush the passer. And, you know, and I turned on the film with that in mind, and I still didn't see the pass rush moves that a 5-tech, um, you know, you need in a 5-tech, uh, you know, the type of Sheldon Rankins. Sheldon Rankins, when I looked at his third down percentage, he was in on 35% of their third down snaps because he can rush the passer, whether it be from the interior or from the 5-tech or outside, uh, um, you know, edge, edge plays. So that's all I wanted to say as far as Jerron Reed goes. Uh, when you compare his stats to other defensive linemen in this draft, you can still get the same production value, which is why in the, in the second, third, fourth rounds, because this defensive line uh, draft is obviously really deep. So uh, I just can't warrant taking Jerron Reed at 19. Don't get me wrong, I love him. I, I, I think he's, you know, end of the first round, early first, uh, second round talent. Uh, especially in our system because his ability to two gap is is really good and honestly I see flashes of Marcel Darius two gap and, and I'll show you that on film here in a little bit so let's go ahead and bring uh, the film in here and Jeff breakdown and we'll start I didn't want to use Clemson right off the bat because he I think he had a really bad game that game he was smoked they were running hurry up and he was just tired um, something to keep in mind is when I'm breaking this film down, I have a coach's clicker, so it may look like your video is buffering or it's frozen or it's paused. That's just me uh, actually working through the film itself, and I'll be putting out a lot of slow motion and whatnot, so keep that in mind. Like right now, boom, it's paused. Uh, hopefully everything works out and make sure the screens are all good to go. All right, good. Alright, so this is versus Tennessee. Uh, Bama was ranked number eight in the country, and uh, I, I really liked. I saw part of this last night, and I liked his his ability versus the run in this game. Alright, so he's lined up as the nose tackle there, and holds his point of attack really well. He's, and that's what I do love about him. On early downs, excuse me, he's able to stack. He's got great extension. He fires out with both hands and gets him on the, the center well before the center even gets out of his stance. That's what I do like about him. Yes, could he play nose tackle? I think he could. I think that, you know, could move Darius wide, but um, I just, you can get that kind of guy. If you're going to play him primarily at nose tackle, you can get that guy later later rounds in this draft. All right, so now he's kind of, looks like he's a... Uh, playing D tackle here and Look like a three tap, but you see he uses his power well here. You know, he bull rushes through the guard. Sorry, I think it was after the tackle. All right, so now he's at nose. All right, and Bama does play a similar two sit uh, two gap system to Buffalo, and you see he fires out right away. And I love, and this comes up several times. Watch him come out of his stance. I'm gonna have to slow it down. Boom, he's out. Good pad level. Both hands coming up to meet the center. Boom, they meet. It's actually, you know, almost like a stalemate right now. But watch. Look at his eyes. You can see him poking his eyes in and out because he's two gapping. So he's got two assignments here. Run obviously goes inside here and. There's nothing he can do about that, really. Sorry about the video here. It's a little choppy to start. 
the victory and fights winning money quarterback. That was a game of I know the guy. A little delay on the, the clicker for some reason. He does a good job of disengaging there. And in pursuit. Not much of a pursuit, but I do like. I mean, he, he was slow to recognize the pull. By that near guard, but this video is kind of bad right now. Hopefully, it clears up a little bit. There's definitely a delay. Uh, so, yes, he was asked to occupy a lot, and you'll see two guys actually taking care of him to start on this play, and he, he just doesn't have much fight. I mean, yeah, I understand you're supposed to occupy, but you also got to be able, if you're going to be playing outside, in our scheme, he's got to have some kind of pass rush. He's got to be able to get after the, the quarterback. And I know these plays aren't the best examples, and I'll try to find one later where he's wide, you know, lined up wide. Uh, just a little, little screen there. Now that was a good job. He does not let the lineman block him. This is so slow. Alright, so he's lined up at nose. First and ten. We're gonna try this again. <laughs> Sorry about that. For some reason I was disconnected. So we'll just kind of pick up where we left off. I don't know what's the problem. Seems like everything's a little delayed. Hopefully it speeds up. Alright, so he's at nose tackle here. Comes up a little high. His pads are a little high. And honestly, the, the, the lineman just goes straight to the second level. So not much there on that play. Okay, so on this play, I understand he's... It's one of those plays he's just asked to ask, occupy two. So, I mean, there's not much else he could do there. That was a great play. He's really strong. He has really strong hands. You'll see him fire out and immediately he punches and pushes this guy away. I do like that. He sees this guy pulling, so he's able to shoot the gap, split the gap here, and get in the quarterback's face. But it is a quick, quick hitter, so play does develop. And this game, he, he took a lot of hands to the face, and I, I didn't see any flags called, and this is one of them. You'll see Tennessee comes uh, comes strong here in this game. They uh, they weren't afraid of him. I mean, he's a big guy, but you'll see Reed, by the end of the game, gets the best of him. Again, fires out, good pad level. And that's why I do like about him. You saw as soon as he fired out, his eyes are in the backfield. So he reads his key at the line of scrimmage, then he, his eyes find the backfield. Four down lineman here. And he's just occupying. He's not, he's not asked to rush. So I get it. I, I get the system. Okay, this is... Okay, he doesn't make a play on the ball here, but this is... I really like this play. All right, so if we put, hypothetically, you put Jerron Reed over over the center as a nose tackle. I do like it. I like that idea. I like the idea of putting someone over the nose, uh, at the nose tackle position to free up Darius. Okay, so watch him fire out here. Boom. Hands inside. He wins that battle. Now watch his helmet. Watch his eyes. Boom. Immediately, he, he gains leverage, and then he's watching. He's, he's trying to find where the ball is going. That's what you need in two-gap, all right? You see his head poke from side to side in in the holes here, um, and and that's exactly what defensive linemen and two gapping uh, systems are asked to do. And you, I mean, if you watch a lot of the all 22 footage of the Bills last year, and when they used Darius at nose, you could uh, he's really good at it, and I do see that in Jerron Reed. 
boom, head back to the other side, finds the ball, disengages, but he's not going to chase anyone down. He's not that athletic. Shows decent lateral. <laughs> How can you not replay that kind of hit? Good job by Raglan there. Uh, you see, Reed is a little high. The lineman actually has his hands inside, but he's he's not getting out leveraged by that runner right here. And that's, I mean, that's the most you could ask for. Now, of course, he is also occupying too. Raglan avoids the the cut block, squares up, and just delivers. Good job of ripping through on that play. See him rip through right here. Boom. That's good technique. He even tries cutting it back because he sees the quarterback hit the top of his drop. Good run disruption here. Slow it down. Fires out. He's a little high, but his eyes are in the backfield. He sees the inside zone coming. And even though he's engaged with this lineman, he still has that hand free to bring down that back. It's a good play. Great run defender. I would love him and the Bills defense as a run defender. But here he just, he's not even really in the play. And honestly, that offensive lineman won that play altogether. You see... He gets that left hand inside of Jerron Reed and just grabs cloth, doesn't let go. Keeps his feet moving, has the angle on the on that block, and just Jerron's... Not that he would have made the play anyways, but that was a good play by the offensive lineman. Now he does lose some ground here. Uh, he does get... Uh, the offensive lineman does get help to drive him, but... Good play by him too. Ah, it's still slow. I think this is him right here. That guy was trying to pull and then just released. I, I don't understand what happened on that play, and honestly, I can't slow it down much more because something's uh, something's glitching my uh, clicker here. I don't know why it's really slow. So that's a good job. You'll see him extend his hands there. Contact. And he's able to shed that block. Very strong player. was a good arm over move by him actually caused the quarterback to get rid of it now right here he's reading run versus pass all right so he sees that it's play action and just does nice arm over move very tight and compact and looks like he got his left hand on the throwing elbow of the quarterback. All right, this is a better angle. Of course, it's slow, but let's take a look again. Great hand work, hand placement. See his left hand. He's thrusting with that left hand and, 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 and using his body to torque and use get some power behind that so he can perform that arm over it's a good play so yeah I mean he can push the pocket he can hold the point of attack versus run like he does on that play but again if we want him to play five tech 
Is is he able to do it? No, I don't think so. Darius is. But again, you can get nose tackles and other rounds. I do like this play. Takes a hand to the face, stays with the play, doesn't lose much ground, still sticks the run back. Second and 14. Another where he just manhandles that guard. Good play. Now they just run a little game. Of course, he's the you know the occupier. He's not. Not the guy that's going to be the immediate threat. I don't know what happened. I tried rewinding that play. I want to try to get this play again from the beginning, but it's not letting me. There we go. So second and nine. Doesn't allow that offensive lineman to get his hands on him. And of course it's a rollout, so he's kind of out of the play. Ah, uh, alright. This is this is where I would love him as a nose tackle. Look at him fire out, just take, played with anger on this play. I mean, he usually has really good hand jolt, but you can see on this play, if I could get it to stop for me. Look at him fire out and just take it to the center. Boom. I mean, he's getting held here. I mean, he. He does all the dirty work. I, I get that in that system. It's like this play just almost takes himself out of position here. And the center just walls him off. Sorry about this. I'm having issues with uh, putting it in the slow motion or whatnot. For some reason, it's really slow. Okay, on this play, he does slant. I can stop it. All right. He does slant here, and this is, and I believe this tackle does too. I mean, this is, this is done on purpose. He's not taking himself out of the play. They're slanting to the left so that it'll free up this linebacker, and it actually works here. You see the linebacker's close. It's a good play. I don't see, you can't tell me he was just occupying people there. He's, he has no jump. He has no get off to, to be a pass rusher. I, I mean, that's just my opinion. I don't think be a good nose tackle. And I'm not even against drafting him. I'm just against drafting him at 19. This is a good play. Shows some good technique. You see him get, plays a, uh, going to be coming at him. You'll see he gets doubled here. And you see him drop that knee. That's what they're told to do. As a defensive lineman, when they get doubled like that and they know the play is coming at him, occupy that double, drop your knee so that you can anchor down. And he does. That's that's fantastic technique. There he is, two gapping again. Right, let's get this. This video is almost over. 
And I'm sorry, this is only going to be the only game I'm actually going to be able to break down. For some reason, this video is really slow. You see, fires out. Great job. Eyes in the backfield. He's looking to this gap and then realizes the ball is coming over here. Good job. He just doesn't have the speed to get to the edge. Alright guys, well, sorry about that. It was kind of glitched up for a little bit. Um, I don't know why. But, like I said, I like Jerron Reed. You know, and I would, I don't mind drafting him. I just, I see so much value at the defensive tackle position in this draft and the defensive line as a whole. To me, drafting him at 19 seems kind of dumb, honestly, because you can get the same kind of guy in later, um, you know, in in later rounds or even mid rounds. I mean, th this deep is so this draft is so deep that you can get a Kenny Clark in the second. You know, stuff like that. Guys like that that can man that nose tackle position down. Uh, so I'll uh, try to find out some more prospects to break down. Uh, it is draft day, so I want to get as many in as I can. I uh, hope you enjoyed.